welcome to the channel. Here, I share scareful stories. Stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you like what you see, please give the video a like, leave a comment down below to let everyone know what you're thinking, and I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Thanks to all of you who have already subscribed. It really means the world to me. Today, we're headed to the great outdoors, Vesper Peak in the North Cascade Mountains in Washington State, to be exact. This is where the scareful story of Samantha Sayers unfolds. Samantha Sam Sayers was 27 years old on August 1st, 2018, when she decided to spend the day solo hiking the Sunrise Mine Trail up to Vesper Peak. It's not a trail for casual hikers. Instead, it's considered to be a backcountry adventure with a certain amount of risk for falls and for losing the trail. There's lots of reports from hikers about rough terrain, boulder fields, snow, and steep climbs, mud, and lots of other hazards on the way up to the peak. None of that deterred Sam as she was an experienced hiker who had hiked in this area before. She headed out that morning around 8 a.m. dressed in light gray hiking pants and a black sports bra. She carried a black backpack and used trekking poles to help her hike. She parked her car at the trailhead, signed the trail register, and began hiking up the mountain. Sam was an easy hiker to remember with a tattooed head and she was bald from the medical condition known as alopecia. She told her boyfriend, Kevin, that she would be home by 6 p.m., so when she didn't make it back home on time, he became concerned. By 8 p.m., he headed out to search for her. Problem was, the drive to the trail took about an hour and a half. On the way, he stopped to pick up a flashlight and some gas. He was out on the trail looking for her by around 10 p.m. He made it quite a ways up the trail before falling and breaking his flashlight, which forced him to head back down the trail using only his cell phone for light. I just can't even imagine the panic of no knowing Sam was missing, possibly injured somewhere, waiting for help to come, both of you being in the dark wilderness but not knowing where each other were, and then being forced to head back down the trail. Kevin drove to a ranger station, which was closed given the time of night, but it did have a payphone. He called 911 and reported Sam missing. He told the operator that Sam had left with more than enough food for her hike, but not clothing suitable for nighttime temps, and that she didn't have a headlamp. By 1.30, search and rescue was beginning to organize a search effort. Kevin headed back out into the early morning dark to search on his own for Sam. The search consisted of searchers on foot, helicopters, drones, and dogs. Volunteers packed survival bags with food, socks, a rain poncho, lighter, fire sticks, flashlight, and a compass, and left them out in the wilderness, hoping Sam would stumble across one. Along with the supplies, the bags were marked with the message, Stay Strong. Investigators were able to find numerous hikers who had seen Sam along the trail. One even saw her eating lunch close to the summit of Vesper Peak. He thought that was around 3 p.m. that day. He said he also saw Sam a bit later, and she was headed back down the west side of the mountain, heading towards Spada Lake. This is the last known sighting of Sam, as the other hikers who crossed paths with her did so while she was hiking up the mountain or while she was at the summit and not on the way back down. If this sighting of her heading down towards Spada Lake is correct, she was heading the wrong way. Searches continued for three weeks and were officially called off on August 23, 2018. Officials felt that they had exhausted all possible avenues for finding Sam. They had identified and searched all of the possible routes she could have taken. They had tracked down other hikers who had seen Sam on the trail, and they had often put searchers in danger by searching what is very rugged terrain. Some areas were simply unsearchable. There was a spot where a glacier met the base of a cliff, and if Sam had fallen, her body could have been trapped beneath the ice. Although official searches ceased, volunteers continued to search for Sam. There was a GoFundMe set up and the money that was raised was used for more searches using both dog teams and helicopters. Volunteers on Facebook helped to look through drone footage for any signs of Sam. Kevin filled his apartment with maps and researched areas to search. He set up a camp at Lake Elan and spent over 100 days searching the mountain for Sam. He worked closely with a former Eagle Scout and mountain man, Bud Carr. The two men called their mission to find Sam, Operation Relentless Pursuit. Time passed and still no trace of Sam was found. By mid-October, with temps and snow falling on the mountain, Kevin and Bud decided it was time to pack up the camp. Kevin would continue to make search trips, but he was back home with his children and beginning to try and figure 
figure out how to move forward without Sam in his life. A year after her disappearance, Sam's family was still searching for her, although their searches were no longer on the mountain. Her mother believed that Sam was out there somewhere alive and had hired private investigators to try and find her. She started her own Facebook group hoping it would help find her daughter. She posted videos to provide updates and sometimes she made statements that vaguely sounded as though she thought Kevin had something to do with their daughter's disappearance. Many on the internet had the same suspicions. Others thought it wasn't Kevin but that someone else on the mountain that day had harmed Sam. As things tend to do on the internet, theories got crazier and crazier. I'm certain that somewhere someone has suggested aliens are at fault. For his part, Kevin had come to the conclusion that Sam was gone. He held a memorial service for her on Vesper Peak and installed an iron cross there inscribed with her name, her date of birth, and proclaiming her Queen of the Stars. Always grateful for the volunteers who helped him and continue to help him with searches for Sam, Kevin pays it forward by participating in searches for other missing hikers. On October 17, 2019, 28-year-old Rachel Lackaduck was hiking the Hidden Lake Trail in the Cascade Mountains when she went missing. There was a snowstorm the day she disappeared, and when she was last seen, she was hiking up into the storm. Almost two years later, on August 15, 2021, Kevin found Rachel's gear and body in the woods off the trail she had been hiking. Although happy to have helped Rachel's family find some peace, he can't help but ask why he or anyone else hasn't been able to find Sam. So that's the scareful story of Sam Sayers thus far. What do you think happened to her? I think she most likely fell and that her body just hasn't been found yet or is in a place that is inaccessible. There were lots of comments about the hike down the other side of the mountain that she was seen going down saying that it is a lot more dangerous than the way that she had come up and that it would be very easy for someone to fall and fall in a place where they may never be found. I also saw some pictures from Sam's Instagram and she was a very experienced hiker but also someone who liked to get those good selfie shots and it just makes you wonder if sometimes all it takes is one wrong step or just losing your balance for one second and you fall in a way that you can't recover from. No matter what happened to Sam, I wish what I always wish for families of the missing, that they find their missing loved one. Let me know your thoughts down below and until next time, always hike with a hiking buddy or if you can't do that, bring along an emergency locator or better yet, do both, even if it's just for a day hike. And remember to stay safe and stay careful.